A sun-splashed September afternoon here in Las Vegas, Nevada, as we are happy to bring you coverage of the inaugural Las Vegas Pickleball Open here at the Plaza Hotel and Casino at 1 Main Street, Las Vegas. Hey, everybody, welcome to Las Vegas State Vents. Hanging out with Melissa McCur McCurley and Mark Rennison. And uh, guys, we're excited to be here and be a part of this tournament as pickleball continues to grow and yet another major tournament added to the schedule. Oh, absolutely. It's been a great week. We started with an amateur event the first part of the week and then are going on with the pros today. Mark, uh, you've seen this sport really grow and to see a, a tournament like this with a large purse for the pros, it really is impressive. What a thrill. This is one of the richest pickleball tournaments in the sport right now. And so to come to such a beautiful place in Las Vegas here at the Plaza Hotel is a real treat for spectators and players. Yeah, this, the purse of $25,000 vaults it right to the top of pickleball tournaments that are being played around the country right now. Over 300 players, not just from the United States, but four countries represented in this tournament here. We are excited to get the coverage underway. Let's play some pickleball here in Sin City. Don't go anywhere. Live action coming your way next. Back here in Las Vegas, our live stream of the final day of action here at the inaugural 2018 Las Vegas Pickleball Open has been exciting. Already, in some senses, a mild upset in what we saw in that first match as McGuffin and Ansberry send Jardim and Yates to the opportunity bracket. And now the action continuing here as we have the Senior Pro Bronze match. And in some senses, you could call this the opportunity bracket final. The loser will get the bronze. The winner will move on to have another chance at the gold. Yeah. Lisa Namu and Steve Cole and Steve Dawson and Vivian Edwards. It's Dawson and Edwards in the far court, Namu and Cole in the near court. Yeah, so it, uh, we did just see a fantastic match here on center court. Now Simone and Kyle will go on to play Corinne Carr and Zane Affleck. And so the winner of that we will see back here on center court. Well, actually, I guess we'll see that match here on center court. So we'll get an opportunity to see it play out right here. And that match will be coming up right after this one. Steve Cole hits that one long. So I've been watching these two teams, uh, or I guess these four players over the, the course of the week, and you're going to see some very different um, technique. In particular, you're going to see the team uh, of Namu and Cole. Um, I'm trying to just figure out on the camera which side it's on. Namu and Cole, they stand very upright when they play. Um, Cole especially, very upright, whereas when you see Edwards and Dawson, when they're up at the net, uh, when they're playing, they're low, they look much more athletic. It's gonna be, you can see it right there. So there's gonna be a real difference here, um, in just in terms of sort of the, the athletic looks that the players have and how upright they stand or, or, or not. Score is 0-1-1, Lisa Namu to serve. An interesting note here, guys. Steve Cole and Steve Dawson, who are now opposing each other in this match, they were teammates yesterday, and they were victorious, taking the gold medal in the senior men's pro division. But now they oppose each other, and we see that happen quite often in mixed doubles. So when your teammate that you, you fight so hard with is suddenly your opposition. That's right. You certainly can see that. and. Men's doubles, uh, certainly, um, and then the next day in mixed doubles, certainly at the level that these gentlemen and, and women are playing. Lisa winning gold yesterday um, with Yaz Stevanovic in women's doubles, and Vivian Edwards getting the bronze with Kim Jade. That in the senior women's pro division. I thought it was interesting to hear from Ty McGuffin about the fact that the sun was more of a factor even than we maybe thought it was for them being on the on the court the sun had not crept fully to where it is now it was only in the corner but the seats were illuminated and, and he said the glare from the seats coming off that alone made it tough to pick up the ball yeah you can certainly see that and the uh the folks that are here watching have since moved from those bleachers and moved over to the bleachers just to our right where there's still shade so between the sun and the wind that has swirled and gusted at some points, it is 
Made it a little bit uh, challenging for some of the players out here today. But I guess the equalizer is that everybody has to deal with it. So it's it's not like one side has a definitive advantage. You might have it when you're on one end of the court, but you're going to switch courts in, in, in game number two. And then if it goes to a game three, midway through game three. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so midway through game three just equalizes the side, whether people think there's an advantage or disadvantage, depending on the elements. Dawson unable to get it over the net, so it'll go to him now as the second server in a 1-1 game. It's the first game of the match. I think this will be interesting here. Yeah. Yeah, so that ball landed um, very hot. It was very high. It landed very close to the net, and with a little bit of wind from behind the backs of Dawson and Edwards, that ball started to come back over to the other side of the court, Lisa Namu and Steve Cole's side. Steve Dawson handled it well. You're also going to see, I talked earlier about some of the, one of the difference between Namu and Cole, how r relatively upright they are compared to Edwards and Dawson. The other thing you see from, uh, from Cole is that when he's up there, he doesn't back up. He is sort of a get up to the line, hold your ground at all costs. So a moment ago, Steve Dawson, from only about 14 or 15 feet away, was hitting overhead smash, and Steve Cole didn't even take a step back. Not what I would recommend for most recreational players. That is how you get hurt. Also, it makes it tough to win the point. Namu with the error. Steve Cole has the home court advantage here in Las Vegas. He is a Las Vegas resident. Yeah, it was a good idea for him to poach there to try to intercept that ball. I like that idea. It's just a little bit out of his reach, and you can see he was disappointed with himself. Just look at the flags blowing in the wind here. And then Namo hits it off of Edwards. Yeah, that's a great spot to aim for. If you aim for your opponent's forehand hip. So in the case of Edwards, she's left-handed, so her left hip. If you're hitting a fast shot, aiming for your opponent's forehand hip is a really tough spot because it's difficult for them to play a backhand if it's there, and it's also difficult for them to hit a forehand. So that was good placement by Namu. So the serve changes sides. And back to a one-point margin here in this best of three, game one. And you can see Steve trying to guard, you know, and block the sun coming into his view there when he's back in that that left-hand corner from, from his side, right-hand corner for our side. So I don't know if, it, if I'm playing on, on this end with my opponents into the sun. I'm looking to see how I can use that sun as a third, third player to my team. Yeah, you might see a few lobs uh, hit now. Uh, so they've got to look up into the sun. Uh, Edward, Edwards and Dawson, that is. Dawson um, having to go back to retrieve the ball. Should have gone into the box. Maybe that's an innovation we could have in the sport, is every pickleball tournament court would have a dedicated ball retrieving dog. <laughs> <laughs> my, my dog, if anyone, if anyone has seen uh, our videos over at Third Shot Sports, uh, my dog, Lacey the Golden Retriever, often features in them, and she would love to be out here chasing those errant balls under the bleachers. Well, I had the first ball ever to be chasing a pickleball been named Lacey. It might be named Lacey Ball. <laughs> That's right. Those, I'm, I'm, I'm going to guess the majority of audi our audience know what we're talking about, but pickleball is much believed to be named pickleball because the dog of the people who invented the sport who would go retrieve the ball was named Pickles. Yeah, I know. It, it's, a, it's one of those things. Um, I, mean, I personally was told by someone who was there the night that it actually occurred that the game is actually named after Pickles, and I actually got to see the actual uh, dog um, that uh, was Pickles the, the night the picture of uh, Pickles was taken. So. I was going to say, you saw a picture of Pickles. I saw a picture you of Pickles. Saw, you saw Pickles itself because the game was uh, from around 1965 correct that's correct yeah so pickles is no longer living but yes i got but to he, see but pickles it. lives on <laughs> yeah, i guess so certainly in spirit you know one of the biggest questions i get from people who are new to the sport is you know the, the name pickleball is it, is it a problem in terms of the growth of the sport but my retort to that is 
There was a point in time where nobody knew exactly what tennis was. I mean, tennis was just a word. Yeah, I went tennis what started in 1884, something like that, I think. So it certainly has 100 years or so on, on pickleball. And once you've been around the game for a while, I know people think it's a it's a funny funny sport, I guess, with a funny name, but you kind of get used to it. And people all the time say, well, what would you change it to? And it, it's really hard to come up with a name that, that, to me, would you know sound any better than pickleball. It gets your attention, there's no question. That's right. So 4-3-2 in the early going here, and then Cole unable to catch up with that one. So side out, and we'll change sides for the serve. Talked a little bit yesterday about Vivian Edwards' tendency after her team serves, whether she's the server or her partner, Steve Dawson's the server, that tendency to hit that serve and then move inside the baseline. I'm not quite sure why she chooses to do that. Maybe she's anticipating a short ball, but if the return gets hit deep to her, see there's the short ball, so she'll get away with it, that's fine. Yeah. But if I'm Cole and Namu, I'm thinking, hey, let's hit that ball deep. Let's get that ball in the back three feet and uh, make her play a ball at her feet. And some people ask Mark, when should I when should I drive a ball? And that was a good example that Vivian got there. The ball was short to her into the court. She was able to step in, get placed, and drive the ball. Yeah, and typically, um, not only do you want the return of serve to be short, you also want it to be high. Because if it's short and low, you still have to hit upwards. And if you're hitting upwards and you hit fast, that ball is likely to go out. So typically the best balls that are candidates for being driven on a third shot our balls returns of serve that are both short and high. Dawson into the net, so Edwards' serve is broken. Dawson will take over. It's another real distinct difference. In the last match, we had Tyson McGuffin, and we talked about his serve and how he uses that to really gain an advantage. Hits it hard, hits it with heavy spin. Steve Dawson, I would say, is the exact opposite of that. Steve Dawson loves using slow, high serves. He likes mixing up rhythms. He'll often hit with his backhand. He looks like he's in no hurry to gain an advantage with his serve. But, um, but it, you know, he's a super solid player, very consistent, technically efficient. Um, just sees the serve mainly as a point starter here as a ball comes into the broadcast booth. Back to a 6-5 game and the Pickleball Channel, who has partnered with us here in our coverage all week long in Las Vegas, and Rusty Howes and his crew have done a terrific job chiming in on the Facebook live feed, and they've offered up a link to some more info about the history of how Pickleball got its name. So this match in terms of score is very close, 6-5, uh, but there's a really important difference that our statistician, Chad Edwards, just pointed out to me. We were talking about those third shot options, that is now the 5, 10, 14th third shot drive that Dawson Edwards have hit. Mm. And they have hit just four drops. Conversely, Cole and Namu have hit only three third shot drives and 15 drops. So almost polar opposites when it comes to the shot selection on these third balls. And yet, just a one point difference on the scoreboard. Yep. I mean, t to me, that reflects the ability for a sport like pickleball to have space in it for people to be effective players using a variety of different styles, right? We're seeing teams that are very closely matched right now off by just one point, and yet they're playing very differently, at least when it comes to the beginning of the point. There's another drive from Namu. Nice pickup by Steve Cole. That's only the fourth that they've hit. Yeah. See, I love that Steve Cole doesn't doesn't even take us an inch back to defend. Just <laughs> says I'm I'm up the, at the line and I am gonna stay here. <laughs> yeah, it looked like that came off the hand of Lisa, so it was just straight up in the air. And yeah, I was gonna I was gonna say I, I wasn't sure that that actually touched the paddle. And if it goes off a body part but crosses back across the net, what's the ruling on that? It has to hit below the wrist. So if it hits you below the wrist hit your hand, doesn't uh, hit your paddle, the ball's still in play. That's wide, so another point for Edwards and Dawson. And you see Steve Cole with a little bit of frustration. Yeah. 
Ron Alvey chiming in about Steve Cole's approach, saying, I'm guessing the older you are, the less you tend to move. <laughs> I don't know that Steve would agree with that. He might. You know, one of the things when, when I travel around and we do our clinics, one of the things we emphasize early on is how sort of the main skill of pickleball is moving. You can have the best swing in the world, but if you can't get to the ball, you can't use it. And it's somewhere around this time that uh, the students look at me, and if they're a little bit older than I am, they look and they say, yeah, just wait till you're our age, right? It's sort of the look they give me. But one of the things that every single player, every person watching this broadcast at home, regardless of how much experience they have playing pickleball, one thing they can all do as well as any pro is have the desire to move for the ball the desire to get there. And while not everyone can move to the ball at the same speed as the pros can, for example, but you can put in that effort. So whatever your 100% is, um, to get out there and have the desire to do that. And I think that would serve players well, whether they're playing at the 5-0 or the pro level, or they're a 2.5, 3-0, 3-5 rec player. Namu now making a little bit of a run as they've knotted it back up at seven apiece. And do uh, Edwards quickly puts that to rest. Seven, seven, Short. Second, serve. Second serve as Edwards' serve was no good. Looked like she was trying to short serve Steve Cole there, so getting it just past the non-volley zone, preferably with a little bit of an angle. But of course, if the serve is hit and doesn't clear the non-volley zone, also known as the kitchen, that is considered a fault. So would you recommend trying to serve it like that, Mark? It's a high risk procedure. I mean, if you, as you see there, if you hit too short, if you hit too wide, it's, it's out, you, it's a side out or you lose the serve. Um, and the thing is, unless your opponents are really immobile, um, it's probably not going to be that effective, right? They're going to be able to move forward to get to that ball. It's going to be easy for them to get up to the non-volley zone. So as a general rule, no, a short serve is not typically a great idea. Um, but every once in a while, as we saw there from Vivian Edwards, you want to throw it in there, see if uh, you can catch your opponent sleeping. Who's the best in the game right now at being able to place the serve? Is, is, is McGuffin the best? Uh, who, who would you put in that category? Just being able to place it in a spot where if they hit their spot, it's almost unreturnable. Well, so so that, that's where players often make the mistake. It's not about hitting an unreturnable serve. Look, you're hitting from 44 feet away underhand. You're not going to hit unreturnable serves very often. What these aggressive serves are about are forcing the returners to hit a return that's not so desirable. So one that's a little bit short that you can then attack. One that is to the middle of the court so the stronger player can get it. So I think all of the when you look at all the top players, um, they're good at putting the ball where they want. The next challenge is can you hit it with enough speed and spin so that your opponents have less time to set up to hit a high quality return. Seven, seven, one, a game that has been tight from the onset. And that Edwards off of Cole. Yeah, we found that uh, certainly we're not seeing the same kind of rallies at the net in this match that we saw in the prior match. There seems to be a lot more harder hitting here. And so once they get to the net at that type of speed, the points are ending pretty fast. Side out, so we'll switch sides for the serve. Yeah, Donnie Dinko, just uh, to answer your question, Dave, Donnie Dinko on Facebook just said, Morgan Evans has a great serve. And I would agree with that. Morgan was one of the first players that you would saw, that you would see really start to use his legs to hit him more, really hitting with heavier top spin. Um, he worked with Selkirk to develop a signature paddle, longer, thinner, that would also help to create that leverage when he would hit it. So, um, I mean, to me, I love being at this, this moment in the sport where we're seeing a real evolution, um, both a technological one, a tactical one, and a technical one, when the players are changing how they're playing and they're changing the game. which some of the purists don't always love. Well, you change and evolve or you go away, ultimately. Yeah. 
And so far, the evolution of this sport has all been for the better. Oh, sure, yeah. The evolution, uh, the growth. The competition just keeps getting better and better. I, you know, almost, almost by the week, not necessarily from year to year. A lot more uh, junior programs that are getting put in place. I had the opportunity to be in South Carolina this summer and was at a facility that was a brand new facility built it's in Camden, South Carolina. And they built 14 brand new tennis courts, 12 brand new pickleball courts. And we're using, using that to help uh, juniors with eye-hand coordination. And then two different paths that they chose, one pickleball and one tennis. Isn't Camden, those courts are beautiful. Oh, These they brand were brand new courts. Camden, South Carolina um, is a, a small town, city, and uh, about 10,000 people, I think. And I was there coaching recently, and they do have this beautiful facility. They teamed up. I know the ambassadors there worked really hard. They teamed up with the city, and um, a very small percentage. Oh, look at this little rally here. Oh, oh. great nice recovery move. by yeah. Dawson, Excellent. and Nicole finally puts it away. And they, they teamed up with the city, and the pitch was, hey, if we invest the money in a beautiful facility for tennis and pickleball, we're going to we're gonna easily make back our investment with the uh, when you have large tournaments, tennis and pickleball, coming in to use those beautiful facilities. And so what they convinced council to do was to add a small tax um, that the residents of the community would pay, and the money generated from that tax went towards that investment. Uh, into these facilities, and it's it's a gorgeous place. Seven nine one Namu and Cole trying to dig out of a small hole here, oh. and they get it back to a one point margin. Cole and Namu, that is now their twenty fourth third shot drop compared to just six third shot drives. Yeah, it's not one able back. to you know, catch up with that one. Sorry. Back and forth battle, that is for sure. And well, you know, we were talking yesterday, I don't think we've mentioned today, Dave, that you've started playing pickleball. I've started playing some pickleball. It's uh, grown a little bit. When, when I first got associated with pickleball and calling the 2016 U.S. Open, it was a new sport to me. And uh, in the time since, I, I reside in the San Francisco Bay Area during the uh, NBA offseason. And uh, not a lot of people in my neck of the woods were playing pickleball, but there are courts now. There are uh, indoor places you can play during the rainy season. There's outdoor places to go play, and, and, and there's a, a huge following. It's getting bigger and bigger every time I go. So it's been a lot of fun to see the growth. My son, who's going to be 10, he's, he's taking it up now as well. We've got a game point right here, 10-8-1, Vivian Edwards serving. There it is. Dawson puts it away. So game one does go to Edwards and Dawson, 11-8. And they will change sides. And game two coming your way here from Las Vegas in just a quick moment. Stay with us. Our live coverage of the inaugural Las Vegas Pickleball Open continues after this quick timeout. The Las Vegas Pickleball Open is brought to you by the Plaza Hotel and Casino, the place to be downtown, Miller Lite, and by Highlands. Well, the Las Vegas Hotel and Casino has been a host to a number of events, Cinco de Mayo. They've hosted rodeo, St. Patrick's Day parties, and now they're hosting a pickleball open. That is a must attend event, both for spectators and pickleball players. Make sure you put it on your calendar. Come check out the Plaza Hotel and Casino, plazahotelcasino.com for all your information. So we start off with Cole and Namu controlling the serve and already getting on the scoreboard. We had a question on Facebook from one of the viewers about uh, skill level and what it takes. So. Um, so typically, th things are changing a little bit, uh, but until recently, 5.0 was considered sort of the highest skill level. And, the, and while technically everyone who starts, I mean, you're starting without a skill rating, um, you don't have to go through any particular steps to move up to, move up to those higher levels. Uh, the main indicator for how strong a player you can be is what your athletic background was before you got to pickleball. 
not just how athletic are you, but what kinds of sports did you come from? So there are a number of players um, who are strong, college-level te tennis players, for example, who come to pickleball for the first time, and right away they can be a 4.5 level player. It will take some time to develop some of the, uh, the tactics of pickleball, but um, you know, we've seen a lot of examples of people who might be brand new to the sport. I know, Melissa, when you run tournaments at pickleballtournaments.com, I'd go to a tournament, and in the past, you'd say, oh, I have no idea who this person is. They must not be any good. Now, when you go to those tournaments and you see a name that you don't recognize, you think, uh-oh, who is this person? Because it's, there's so many people coming into the sport. Yeah, you do. And I saw some really good ones coming in when I was traveling on the East Coast this summer. So, And some of those coming to the national tournament that we names to look out for. We did get a question from Andrea on what is what determines a senior in, in this tournament it is 50 plus 50 plus to play in the senior pro Dawson getting a little help from the net there and a little acknowledgement to the other side 151 so Cole and Namu have really jumped out to a quick start in the second game say that again I don't know if going to this other side of the court helped them now maybe they've got uh, a little bit of wind at their back but uh, they're looking comfortable right now 152 So at that point, look, you know, we've talked about the usefulness of the power game. If you're hitting hard and your opponents are handling it, they're playing balls back, they're stopping you from continuing to go on offense, at some point you need to recognize that it's not working, to try something different. So I would have liked there to see Dawson and Edwards, instead of pounding a fifth, a sixth, a seventh fastball, is to play a drop, a low, slow ball into the kitchen, and uh, see if they can build the point from there. I'm giving Vivian a hard time all the time. So in this case, this is me giving Vivian a hard time. I'd like to see if she could even do that. <laughs> <laughs> Vivian's got one speed, not only on the court, but off the court as well. <laughs> yeah, she, well definitely, she definitely plays with a certain amount of intensity, doesn't she? She definitely does. Well, it has served her well to ascend to this level and the pickleball, pickleball world. Yeah. So. Five, one, two. She already addressed that. Dawson's return a little bit long, so the deficit grows here for Five, Edwards and Dawson. Cole and Namu with a 6-1 advantage. A reminder that we have two more matches coming up after this, Melissa. We have a bronze medal of the pro mixed doubles, and that will be followed by the gold medal match in the pro mixed doubles. So lots of great pickleball action already today and coming up. Yeah, and that pro goal or bronze is going to feature Zane Affleck and Corinne Carr versus Kyle Yates and Simone Jardim. Steve, Steve Dawson forces the side out. Edwards and Dawson with some work to do to climb back into game two here. Watch out. So the, what a great shot by Lisa Namu there. Not just to make the shot, but for her to back up. As soon as she realized that Edwards was receiving an over a lob that she was going to smash, Namu backed up. Increasing the distance between her and her opponent gives her more time to react. She digs the ball and steals a point. Couldn't, di couldn't deal, dig that one and steal the point. So a little bit of momentum now. After a 5 nothing start to this game by Namu and Cole, Edwards and Dawson have scored three of the last five points in the game. Make it four of six. Four, seven, two. Four, seven, two. Oh, and that was a real nice drive there by Vivian who really then set up the, the put away for Steve. 
So 5-7-2, four consecutive points now. This is the senior mixed pro bronze match. So whoever wins this has the opportunity to go compete for the gold medal against Chris Anderson and Kevin Booth. Chris Anderson and Kevin Booth are the reigning national mixed doubles senior champions. So I know both of these teams would like an opportunity to go play, go play them. And right now it's anybody's match. It sure is. Mm. Lisa just threaded that one right through. I think they thought that might have been long, but um, ball just sat down into the court. Eight, five, two. Mm. That's so important in pickleball is, is if you watch, and our viewers can, can watch, see this for themselves, how often a point ends because one person doesn't control the height well. They hit that ball a little bit too low and it's in the net, or a little bit too high and it gets hit hard. Just watch how often height control is the limiting factor. Steve didn't hit Case it quite high point. enough, it's in the net, yeah. I, the, honestly, and so I know when we go and we do our clinics, and people want to work on all, on all sorts of things and that's fine. But you know, for players at home, if you're thinking about one thing that you want to, be, to do to become a better player, is become great at controlling the height of the ball. At keeping the ball within, let's say, one or one and a half paddle heights over the net, if you can keep that ball in that little imaginary window, generally, you're going to do pretty well. Six, eight, two. So they're just slowly creeping back here, aren't they? Yeah, after a five nothing hole to start this game, uh, but that shot long. Hit it slightly too high, goes out the back of the court. Example after example. Hit a bit too high, your opponents put it away. <laughs> <laughs> there seems to be a you, theme I, I, here. I, I, pr I promise I won't do this point. anymore. <laughs> I promise I won't do this anymore. But no, I, but I, I, but I do think that um, that that is something that anyone can work on. Whatever your level of skill, whatever your athletic ability, if you can work on um, being really good at sort of sending uh, anything after the server return within one and a half paddle heights, um, good things happen. Yeah, and that's the first point Namu and Cole have, have gotten in a few few rounds here. Yeah, but it's an important one. It moves it to 9-6-2. They're now two points away from forcing a third game. Although now the serve is going to change sides. We'll see if Steve and Vivian can capitalize on this here. See if they can, one point at a time, I know, see if they can get to nine. And there they are there at seven. There you go, too so. high. <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't going to say it. <laughs> <laughs> no, that one oh. was too conspicuous to not point out. And there's that lob, lofty serve that Steve mm -hmm. likes to throw in there to keep things mixed up, and there it goes out. So 8-9-1 back to a one-point game. And now a backhand serve, and, but he, he threw, he, it was, he, he hit missed it the out. serve. Yeah, there we go. I'm not sure I understand that. I'm going to have to ask Steve about that. 8-9-2. So the serve goes back now to Cole and a chance to serve out this game. If he can get two points. Oh yeah. There's that, we talked earlier about if you aim for your opponent's forehand hip. She got her there on the forehand elbow, but that sort of spot is so difficult to defend against. Namu did a great job of making life difficult for Edwards. Game point with Cole on the serve and a chance to force a third and decisive game in this bronze medal match. And there wow. it is. Good poach. So we will go to a third game for the second time so far today in our live coverage. Game number three in the bronze medal match for the senior pro division. Coming up after this quick timeout, a nice comeback here after losing game number one for Cole and Namu. Can they keep it going in game three? Find out next. The Las Vegas Pickleball Open is brought to you by the Plaza Hotel and Casino, the place to be downtown. Miller Lights 
and by Head. Back here in Las Vegas, most of the actual tournament action on the other courts here atop the Plaza Hotel and Casino is finished, but that has just opened up an opportunity for the youngsters to take to the court. And they are playing some ball and having some fun. Pickleball style here in Sin City, Las Vegas, Nevada. And we mentioned earlier, these courts are largely going to be staying as a permanent place here on the pool deck. And if you come here to Las Vegas, make sure you come stay at the Plaza Hotel and Casino and, and get a chance to come play on these courts. Oh yeah, it's a, a great place to come play. Excellent atmosphere. You can stay right here at the hotel. There's plenty of great restaurants, gambling if that's what you like to do, live entertainment, restaurants, bars, poolside, all right here at the fifth floor on the rooftop at the Plaza Hotel. Renovated, fully renovated in 2011 too. I know I'm staying here. 40, Many of us are. Very 40 nice. years after its original opening, opening in 1971. This property actually housed the original train station in Las Vegas. Edwards putting it between Cole's legs. And Edwards, or, uh, excuse me, Cole coming over and asking for a new ball, saying that this ball is wobbly. It's one of the interesting things about pickleball is that the ball changes over time. And so especially in conditions like this where it's so hot out, last time I looked it was at 96 degrees, and, uh, and the ball changes. And so the kind of ball that you're playing with at the beginning of the day or even the beginning of a match might be different than the kind of ball, the, the way the ball plays towards the end as it softens. And so uh, what players will occasionally do if they think that that ball is not playing sort of pure, as they say, uh, they'll ask for a different one to use. Dawson's return long, so make it 2-0-2. Make it 3-0-2, and this is shades of what happened in game number two when Cole and Namu got off to a 5-0 start. Yeah, they sure did, and so they're getting off to that start again, again in game three. And there's the side out, and the serve will change sides. So I think what we're seeing more of now, we saw this, uh, it was brought up to us by our statistician, Chad Edwards, um, that we're starting to see a little bit more targeting of Vivian Edwards. So we can expect to see if in this third game they continue to do that, forcing her to play more balls uh, than her partner, Steve Dawson. Vivian holding her own there for the most part, but then finally hits it long. Edwards already with one bronze medal this week in Las Vegas. She would prefer to have a different color medal coming out of the mixed doubles. And uh, more green, too. More green. Yes, absolutely <laughs> more green. The $25,000 purse overall for the tournament makes it one of the richest on the pickleball circuit. I believe that alone will get the attention of more and more people and more reason that we expect this tournament to be bigger and better next year. Yeah, definitely so. And the first three days of this tournament was the amateur portion and then finishing off the last two days. It was all doubles, no singles played at this tournament. You know, it's funny, often I receive emails from people who ask about tournaments. Hey, we're thinking about hosting a tournament. What do we have to do to get the pros to come? Well, there's some things, things that that here at the Plaza uh, Hotel and Casino do really well. You make the players feel comfortable, you have a beautiful venue, you have good quality courts, you have great staff, and they're doing a great job here. But the thing, I mean, these pros are out here, if they're not out here winning money or having a chance to win uh, money, then they're at home earning money through coaching or other things. So um, if, you, you know, if you want the pros to come to your tournaments, you gotta put up the cash, that's the way it works, as well as have, you know, great, um, great venues and so uh, it's exciting to see how um, the game is changing there is sort of a professional side that's coming in that some people are resistant to but other people really really love and um, they've done nothing but uh, put on a great show here at the Plaza Hotel well this game three so far has been dominated by Namu and Cole 0-5-2 now they're continuing to target Edwards and you feel that pressure when you know that the balls are coming to you um, you don't want to let down your team, you don't want to let down yourself. It would be interesting to see if uh, she and Dawson take a timeout soon and then maybe make a plan 
to counter that. Well, they're about to be changing sides of the court as they do in a decisive third game. Yeah, they only change sides uh, between games in game one and two, and then when you get to a third game, you'll switch, switch sides at six. But we have to wait a minute to get to six as Namu and Cole have both of their serves broken. And this is just like a mirror image of game two. And now finally on the board. And that's what happened in game two. That's where they got their first point, 5-1. Five, five, There's that lob serve from Dawson again, throwing up a bit of a rhythm change. He too was a little bit inside the baseline, and so when that return gets hit deep and he has to back up, it can cause problems when you're hitting your third shot. So side out, so now a chance for Namu and Cole to add to their lead. And there it is, 6-1, and they will change sides of the court. So a dominant start here, and will the switching of the sides help Edwards and Dawson is now they will not have the sun in their eyes, but they will have the factor of the glare of the sun off the seats. We're gonna take a quick timeout. We'll be back with the conclusion of game three after this quick timeout. The Las Vegas Pickleball Open is brought to you by the Plaza Hotel and Casino, the place to be downtown, and by Miller Lite and Franklin, the X40, the official ball of the Las Vegas Pickleball Open. Welcome back to Las Vegas, Nevada. Sunny Saturday afternoon, starting to give way to Sunday evening. And we started our live stream coverage here this afternoon with this championship court being or Saturday afternoon. Excuse me. I'm <laughs> ready to get on to you Sunday. You are. Apparently. You are. Saturday afternoon right into Sunday evening. I yes, like it. Saturday afternoon into Sunday evening. <laughs> uh, but nonetheless, it is uh, started to give way to evening in the shadows that consumed the championship court when we began if now given away to sunshine on most of the court. Yeah, there's a little shade in the corner back by Lisa. Scores 1-6-1, one, one. Vivian Edwards serving. And that's a good eye by Steve Dawson to let those balls go out. You know, being able to hit balls well is an important skill, of course, in pickleball, but so is knowing when not to hit the ball. And Steve Dawson just showed uh, why that's so important. Let those balls go out, take your point, move on. Oh, nice scoop by Steve. It really was. When he first hit it, I didn't know if there'd be enough to get it over the net, but yeah. there was. Yeah. Edwards has struggled a little bit um, in this match when up close to the kitchen line and only 14 or 15 feet away from her opponents when they hit fast at her. And that's a strategy that Namu and Cole have used very well in that second and uh, especially in this third game here. So let's see if they keep doing it, speeding up the ball, flicking it at Edwards to see if she can keep it low. Got the benefit of the net on that exchange. And Steve continuing to mix up his serve. He, he did another backhand serve just before that one. Oh. Wow. <laughs> 360 backhand drop volley. <laughs> don't see that one every day. No, you don't. Uh, Lisa was quite proud of it, wasn't she? Yeah, and Edwards uh, nodded her <laughs> approval despite the fact that it, it did not favor her. We saw Steve Dawson backing up to defend well again giving himself time, giving himself space. Sometimes you'll hear people refer to that zone as no man's land or three-quarter court. I don't love calling it that because you see good players play from there when they expect that their opponents are gonna hit hard. They back up to that area. They wish they could back up further if they had the time and uh, they defend from three-quarter court. Well, you know what I call that area, right? That's what I call the transition zone. Some people call it the transition. I, I like that, that term much better because it, um, 
it doesn't have a negative connotation the way that no man's land does. Yeah. Well, I just recognized it as I was getting involved in pickleball and were watching some of the higher level players, and it was actually um, Jennifer Lucor that I was watching play that I thought, I'm seeing something different here. I'm seeing somebody who can play through that transition zone and do so very well and consistently to give themselves an opportunity to come through that zone. And I start to say, that's what you got to be able to do to get to the next level. Edwards return into the net. So Dawson with the second serve. Get a feeling this is a crucial stage of the match. Yeah, she's uh, reversed that, right? At first, Edwards thought maybe it was out, but then saying that it wasn't. It looked to be in from our vantage point. It was a senior moment. <laughs> Not touching that one. <laughs> There's again, again, another example of Namu and Cole speeding the ball up, hitting fast at Edwards. That's been an effective strategy for them here in these last two games. So 8-3-1 now as Cole and Namu have taken control. Uh, the wasted opportunity there. It's so tough when you're playing these third shot drops because you know that if you don't hit it perfectly, you're going to lose the point, right? You're going to hit it too low or too soft and it's in the net or too high and your opponents get to smack it. So it's so tough. And this is one of the things that, um, one of the things that really separates levels of player is the ability to hit those quality third shots and, uh, and get it just the right height, just the right speed so it's not attackable. So here's that crucial 9-3, Dave, that we talked about earlier. And they're just not able to quite get to 10. So Steve and Vivian get another opportunity to climb back into this game. Yeah, they need to take advantage of this service opportunity. See, this is where a drop would be useful because yeah, she's, she's not overpowering Namu. Yeah. Namu just weathers the storm, outlasts her. You've got to be able to do something different if plan A is not working. Yeah. Yep, and she just continued to drive it. Like, I think it was three drives right in a row. How's that expression go? Dance with the one that brunga, right? The, the idea that, you know, if this is, if that game style, hitting those hard, low drives is what has brought her to this position with, that has had, that has, she's had a considerable amount of success with, that's what you stick with, right? And I know some players have that attitude of like, hey, this is my game plan and I stick to this game plan no matter what. Um, an equivalent in tennis might be, for example, Serena Williams, right? She's not someone who really changes up the way she plays, for better or worse. Um, but I do think that that players who are willing to recognize what's going on in front of them to change the strategies and do something a bit different. I think they have um, they have an advantage. So a wasted opportunity is Dawson and Edwards did get the serve back and couldn't put any points on the board. Cole able to smash it down and puts us a point away from a decisive decision here. And Cole and Namu hoping to get on to the gold medal game. And there it is. There it is. So how about that? A comeback by Cole and Namu and they win it. 8-11, 11-8, 11-3. Again, here's a look at the match point. And an impressive rally, an impressive comeback after dropping the first game. They will have an opportunity now to play for gold while Dawson and Edwards settle for the bronze here in Las Vegas. The Las Vegas Pickleball Open is brought to you by the Plaza Hotel and Casino, the place to be downtown, Miller Lite, and by Highlands.
Back here in Las Vegas, Nevada, it is a gorgeous Saturday evening, and the pickleball has fantastic, been fantastic, and the mixed doubles senior division has not disappointed as well. Lisa Namu, Steve Cole, you guys are moving on to play for gold. Let's talk a little bit about this match you just had because you dropped game one, and then you came out like gangbusters in game two, grabbed a 5 nothing lead, repeated that same thing in game three. Uh, what changed between game one and two? Well, after the first uh, game, we kind of got our bearings and uh, with the wind and the sun and our strategy. So we finally uh, buckled down and um, really got to business and just really um, put the ball in play more. Uh, depending on the wind, uh, we either had to hit a little harder or a little less, but mostly we kept it to um, Vivian was our goal and to come in on that. Yeah, we noted that on the broadcast that it looked like you guys were targeting Vivian. Was there something that you saw that you could take advantage of there? Well, the reason why we had to change up our strategy, obviously losing game one, we had to do something different because uh, we just couldn't keep doing the same thing over and over and expecting different results. So basically what we did is Steve became a beast. He was taking more of the court, and we knew we had to play keep away from Steve because he is a beast. And so we had to target Vivian and uh, maybe try to give her more body shots because she's a power player. It's hard to derive power from body shots. So that's how we changed up a little bit, and it, it worked. I got to ask you, you play against your partner yesterday, yeah. and I know that happens all the time yeah. in, in this sport, but how tough is that? You're, you know, you're toiling with somebody, yeah. you win a goal, then it's like, okay, now I got to go beat you. Yeah. Well, you know, that's, that's pickleball. <laughs> and one day has nothing to do with the next day. And we're all friends, friends first, but we're also competitors. And he's a competitor and so am I. Lisa's a competitor, so is Vivian. We battle it out, and then later on we can have a beer together. Well, I, I'm happy you brought that up because, you know, he's a Las Vegas native. So if you guys win tonight, he, he's got all the places uh, already targeted for you to be able to go tonight, right? Well, he's got a, a bucket of beer. So that's kind of a good incentive. For Actually, you really don't even need to leave. The Plaza Hotel no. and Casino is, is the place to be. Guys, congratulations. Thank you. Go get hydrated, and uh, and we'll see you a little bit later on this afternoon. Yes. Thank you. Thank you very much. All right. We're taking another time out here from Las Vegas, but so much more still to come. Don't go anywhere. Our live coverage continues after this timeout.